Hey guys, so today in this video, what I wanted to do is go over a collection of software that I wanted to kind of let you guys know about and um, kind of explain the whole reasoning behind this video. So on that note, the reason why I wanted to make this video is that I've made videos in the past about using, for example, something like Process Lasso to help Windows scheduling with actually being able to make sure that you're not having um, compatibility issues. So games being scheduled on, for example, Intel's E cores or games being scheduled on AMD's um, dual CCD designs incorrectly. So half the cores are scheduled on one CCD, half the cores are scheduled on another. You get a lot of performance penalties when that type of stuff happens. And so I've made videos using Process Lasso in the past, but the problem is, is that there's always been a handful of services that have always had essentially protected levels of actual um, optimization or tweaking. And so, for example, I wasn't able to tweak basically anything about these specific highlighted services because of the way the actual Windows operating system is designed. And so it sort of left a handicap where, yeah, I could get my game to be scheduled on the actual correct cores, but when it came down to all of the other background noise that's happening, so the system, the kernel, all of those different things, I couldn't guarantee that it wouldn't have activity. And so that's where this next tweak comes in is that it basically works almost perfectly with it and it has a amazing actual synergy is reserved CPU sets. And the way that this software works is it's a kernel level tweak, it's a registry entry. And essentially what it means is that when you select any one of these cores, what you're basically telling Windows is don't schedule anything on those cores, or at least try to schedule almost nothing on those cores. And so I only wanted it to schedule stuff on my other CCD, my regular CCD chip, not my 3D chip. Because when I played games, for example, I would notice there would be way too much activity on core zero. And so it was kind of like having seven X3D cores because essentially one of them would be flooded with a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, I couldn't con I couldn't control. I couldn't have any influence over. And so shout out to the person uh, um, known as Amit XV. He's been super helpful in making these um, uh, videos happen. He's been showing me how to use this different software. He's been giving me um, a lot of different useful info and feedback. And so you guys should definitely go and check him out. I'll leave his um, information in the description of this video because he's just been, he also has a whole bunch of other useful tools and software that you guys should also check out as well. So I highly recommend it. And so with that being in mind, I guess the best way to demonstrate how this actually works with Media Experience Analyzer is what you want to do is go into um, uh, Windows essentially and go down and develop or download the Windows ADK or Development Toolkit. And then once you get that downloaded, you're going to see an option for what's called the Media Experience Analyzer and Performance Recorder. And so the way you get this started is you just wanna click start and that will start recording. And don't do this for longer than five to 10 seconds because it uses an absolute ton of RAM, like a ton of it. And so it can immediately choke up your system if you record it for too long. But once you do that, then you're gonna to wanna to go and click the save button on there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get essentially a trace file or essentially a path that's going to be labeled right here, but inside of the actual performance recorder. You're gonna to wanna to copy that and then go into the media experience analyzer. And what you're going to want to do is, actually you can just see it right here is, you're going to want to type in XA-I with parentheses and then copy and paste that trace path into there. So obviously this is using the same one, 10, 39, 33. So that's how you do it. And if before that, if you haven't done this, you'll want to do this as well. So set symbol path dot CMD and then hit enter on that as well. And that should be all that you need to do to get this up and running and have the same tools available for you as well. So you can test it for yourself. So with that being said, here is essentially an example of what I'm talking about with um, those certain processes that were completely protected, but now no longer are um, untouchable essentially. So CSRSS was a huge one. And you, as you can see, CSRSS is completely moved off of core zero. There are no actual activity running on core zero, which is gonna be down here. So CSRSS was a huge one. And then if we also go down, we also can see system or essentially the kernel, as you can see as well almost no activity is happening on core zero. All of it's happening on the other CCD, which is what we're looking for. 
because that's how we're going to improve the stuttering and the hitching with the actual scheduling of the operating system when it came to using the E cores and the P cores. So we have that available, win init, win log on, all of them. It's basically every single software and service is going to be running on this actual correct scheduling path that I've selected for this um, different operating system. So yeah, guys, that's basically the um, video. That's all I wanted to kind of share. Um, it's a really cool tweak because for me, I've wanted to kind of figure out how I could move all of Windows off of Core Zero um, for the longest time because it's something that has been um, kind of um, important for me with the chip that I have. So the 7950X3D with its um, vCache die and non vCache die. And so the only thing that is scheduled on Core Zero is just timers. So if I go to right here, that's it. There's basically, that's the only stuff that's scheduled. And these timers are only one or two every so often, because as you can see, this is not consistent like at all. So this isn't like constantly pulling like how you would see with a bunch of other stuff. So if I just unselect all of these, you'll just kind of get an idea as to the fact that it's only timers basically that are being scheduled. So yeah. And then if I go into the kernel right here, so the actual kernel driver, as you can see, there's almost basically no activity, and even the activity that is, it's basically only one or two small little, small little tiny actual, you know, processes happening in the background. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the um, content. Um, I do plan on publishing a few more videos in the upcoming future that are going to be a little bit more in-depth with some input lag and some DPC latency, especially. Um, with latency related to other things as well. And so if you guys liked this video, if you think it was um, educational and informative, um, please subscribe, it helps a ton. And yeah, guys, um, take care. My name's Savaterix and I'm out.